Hello, everyone. So welcome to Pacific Parkland's sixth and final bedtime nature story. Uh, it's been a lot of fun having everybody the last six weeks. And I know that a lot of you have been here before and have enjoyed it before. And those of you who have been here before know Zoe. Zoe's a fantastic uh, storyteller and interpreter with Metro Vancouver Regional Parks. And she's always entertaining and fun. And tonight she has a wonderful, wonderful uh, fin finale of our series for you tonight. Uh, I also would like to say that I have two helpers with me tonight. There's Jeff, who is our technician and our, our person who launches all of the polls and helps us speed things along and keep us all on track. So thank you, Jeff, and you'll hear his voice later. And as well, there's Rochelle. Rochelle will be answering some of the questions or comments that are in the chat and making sure that we all, all, all are, are looking at the, the comments. But also, I wanted to say that Rochelle has been the designer who created all the marketing material for the series and she has just done a fantastic job and i know that uh, you probably all enjoyed it as much as i have so so thank you rochelle it's been wonderful and my name is janet antonio and i'm the executive director of the pacific parklands foundation as you know i love parks and i love nature and my job is to help find ways to make metro vancouver regional parks the best they can be for everyone and to connect people like you, your friends and your parents to the plants and wildlife and the outdoor so that you'll learn to love nature and value nature. And um, another organization that I work with is called CTS Youth Society. Now CTS Youth Society works with, with youth that are a little bit older than, than most of the people here today. They're usually working with youth who are 12 to 18 years old and we have programs in Metro Vancouver Regional Parks and overnight camping when that's allowed and hopefully some of you will become campers as well. And they do have a special event that's coming up that I wanted to share with you. Uh, and this is a webinar that might be interesting for parents in particular. Uh, Sonia Richmond is going to be coming on March 30th, and I've asked Rochelle if she can share a link in the chat so that if you're interested, and Sonia uh, is hiking across uh, the world's longest recreation trail and talking to youth, and she's really inspired to get youth outside and loving nature. So parents, if this is something that interests you as well, hopefully you'll also register for that webinar and join us there. So um, before we get started here, I also have uh, the recognition as always. And earlier today, I was out in Widgeon Marsh Regional Park, which is our newest park. And it will, won't be open for the public for a couple of years. But while I was there, I actually saw some people walking around with shovels and other tools. And they were archeologists. And they were looking for artifacts to see if there was any evidence of the people who had lived there before, long, long before. So this is before your parents or your, myself or your grandparents were here. And these were the, the, the traditional territories of the Coalish, Coast Salish First Nations. And while I was there, I was reminded again how fortunate we are that we can share this land and how grateful I am and how much uh, how important it is to pause and to remember that and to appreciate that the, these are the traditional territories. So I always like to comment on that as we begin. And now we get to come to the best part of the evening. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Zoe. Zoe, if you can join us and I, everybody else, it's time to have some fun. So thank you and I'm looking forward to this, Zoe. Well, hello everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you tonight and share another story with you. Now, some of you have been with us from, from the very beginning and have, have seen, this is your sixth story that uh, you've seen, so welcome. And then some of you, this might be your first night. So I'm hoping that you'll really enjoy the story and I'm gonna be sharing some nature knowledge with you as well. But I'm gonna start tonight with the story. So, did you know that a long, long time ago, believe it or not, trees didn't have any cones, and this meant they had nowhere to put their seeds. But one morning, great excitement filled the forest. News had spread that the following day would be cone handing out day, or cone day for short. 
and all the trees in the forest would receive cones. Now, one of the first to hear the news was a little Douglas squirrel named Dash. As soon as Dash heard the news, he quickly ran to tell his very best friend in the whole world, Little Tail, and Little Tail was a little hemlock tree. Tail saw Dash running as fast as he could towards her. Because he ran so fast when he reached her, he couldn't even speak because he was out of breath. Tail looked at Dash and said, what is wrong, my friend? <sighs> Nothing is wrong, he said in between deep gasps. Uh, I have wonderful news. He continued to tell Tail how tomorrow was to be cone day and that she was invited to receive a cone. Tail was thrilled that she swayed back and forth with joy and she shook her branches excitedly. Oh yeah, she said, I'm going to get the biggest cone of them all. Well, Dash said, if you want to get the biggest cone of them all, you better get there early before everybody else. Oh yeah, yeah, I will, said Teo, no problem. But before tomorrow, let's go have some fun. So the two set out for the day looking for new adventures. They lounged about for a bit. They picked some mushrooms. They dipped their toes along the edge of a stream and they listened to the little birds chirp. Cheep, 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 cheep. Now all that singing was a sign that the day was coming to an end and that it soon would be dark. Dash said to Teo, maybe we should head home soon. It was getting late and you have a big day tomorrow. Now, Tail was a young tree, a preteen. And if any of you know this age group, they often don't have a care in the world. Tail looked at Dash and said, oh, oh, don't be silly. We've got lots of time. And besides, I want to see the stars come out tonight. I've heard there's a constellation shaped like bear. So the two settled down in a field to stargaze. Needless to say, it was very late when Teo went to bed. The next morning, Teo's alarm went off. Beep, beep, beep. Well, actually the alarm was Dash. You see, Douglas squirrels have an amazing alarm call to alert other squirrels that danger may be nearby. But Dash always used it to wake up Teo. It was pretty annoying. So Tail rolled over and said, oh, just five more minutes. And she did this about five more times. Finally, Tail rolled out of bed. Oh, and she realized how late she was for cone day, the day when all the trees would receive a cone. The little hemlock tree raced to the clearing while all that, where all the other trees were, awaiting for the arrival of the great cone giver. The other trees had already started to line up and rather be at the front of the line, like Tail wanted, she was somewhere in the middle. As she waited, Tail imagined herself decked out with big, beautiful cones from top to trunk. But then she thought, oh no, I'm too far back in line. She realized that all the trees at the front of the line would get the biggest cones. She figured by the time I get to the great cone giver, he will have handed out all the big cones. And I'll be stuck with all the measly insignificant ones. Oh. So the little hemlock decided she would move up to the front of the line. She realized if she was to move up in the line, she would have to act casual. So she placed her branches behind her back and sort of whistled. as she walked up past all the other trees and stepped in behind the first tree. Now Dash followed closely behind and said to her, I don't think this is a good idea. But Tail would not listen. At last, the great cone giver came with his sack of cones. Hello? Hello? 
to the first tree, a pine tree, he gave the biggest cone. Then he pulled out a second cone. It was very large. But then he stopped because he was about to hand it out to Teo. The great cone giver said, weren't you further back in line? The little hemlock hung her head in shame and confessed that yes, she had budged. The great cone giver thought a moment. Go to the back of the line, he said quietly. I'll speak with you later. Tail was mortified. She couldn't believe she had been sent to the back of the line. She was so worried that the great cone giver wouldn't give her any cones at all. Dash tried to console his friend, but it was no use. Tail was devastated. The great cone giver continued handing out cones. You get a cone, and you get a cone, and you get a cone. Until at last, he reached the little hemlock again. The great cone giver could see how upset this little hemlock was and knew that Teo was sorry for what she had done and that her excitement had just got the best of her. So digging deep down into the depleted sack, the great cone giver searched and searched until finally he pulled out a tiny cone. Because you budged in line, hemlock, you were sent to the back of the line, and now I give you the smallest cone in the sack. The little hemlock hung her head down again in shame. She was truly sorry. sorry. I can see you regret your behavior, Hemlock. Therefore, do not despair. To make up for the small size of your cones, I grant you the gift of abundance. Every year you shall produce more cones than any tree in the forest. And that is why today a Hemlock tree has a droopy little top and many, many small cones. But on the bright side, the little hemlock and Douglas squirrel remain wonderful friends, even today. And the next time you are out in a regional park, you might even see a little squirrel high up in the branches of a hemlock tree. So I hope you enjoyed that story about hemlock trees. Now I'm going to share with you some interesting facts about hemlock trees. So just give me a sec here and I will we'll share my screen with you. All right, so this is a beautiful hemlock forest. You can see lots of hemlock trees in the forest, the beautiful sun shining through. So this tree, this forest is dominated by hemlock trees. Now, hemlock trees are one of the most common tree species along the coast of BC. Interesting thing about hemlocks is that they actually have a really shallow root system. And so what this means is that often they can be blown over very easily uh, by the wind. So as you can see in the picture, there's a lot of trees that are down on the ground, but this doesn't have to be a sad thing. Actually, this is actually an important part of the whole ecosystem of a forest and the cycle that happens. So these trees that are down on the ground, they might provide homes to small animals. They also might pr provide homes to insects and different bugs and things like that. Also, they're gonna decompose and put nutrients back into the soil of this forest. So it's a really important life cycle. But now I'm curious to know if any of you know how long a hemlock tree could live. So Jeff is going to pull up a poll for us that you can answer. So Jeff, can you pull up that poll about how long can a Western hemlock tree live? Yeah. All right. So here you go. Do you think hemlock trees can live 50 years, 100 years, 200, 300, or 500 years? What do you think? You tell me what you think. All right. So it looks like the majority of you thought that hemlock trees can live up to 100 years, but it looks like we had answers for everything. All right, so believe it or not, 
a hemlock tree can live up to 500 years. Isn't that amazing? So now we don't often get to see trees of that size anymore. So, but if a, a hemlock tree was left in a pristine forest, it definitely could live to 500 years, which is fabulous. All right, let's learn a little bit more about hemlock trees. All right, so hemlock trees can grow up to about 60 meters. So that is actually a very tall tree. So, but I have a hard time thinking about what 60 meters would be. So another way to look at it, if this means anything to you, it does to me because I love bears. But if a black bear was standing up on its back legs, an adult black bear, that would mean 33 of them would have to be standing on top of each other to be 60 meters the same uh, height as a hemlock tree. So the other cool thing about hemlocks is they're what we call conifers. So conifers means that they're evergreen and that they have cones. So evergreen means that their leaves are green all year round. So that means right now in the winter, these are the kind of trees that we still see greenery on. Whereas other trees like big leaf maples that are deciduous, they lose their trees. But these ones are green all year round. So as we learned in the story, their cones may be small, but they have a lot of them. So hemlock uh, tree cones, they start off greenish in color, but as they age, they turn brown like this. Now, the branches of hemlock trees are very beautiful and very feathery in appearance because they have very small, delicate needles. So much smaller than our other conifer trees. And this is one of my favorite things about hemlock trees, and that's why I love them. If you notice close up, you'll see that the needle lengths are all different lengths. So some are shorter and some are longer. And there's something about them that it just makes them really sweet and delicate, but sort of a little bit messy at the same time. So hemlock trees are definitely one of my favorites. And the other key characteristic that we kind of talked about in the story is the fact that hemlock trees have this droopy leader or top. So they have at the top of the tree, they'll kind of have that droop, like the sad little hemlock after uh, she got sent to the back of the line. So that's another way that you can identify a hemlock tree. All right, so the other day I was out for a stroll in the forest at Campbell Valley Regional Park. And I noticed something rather strange. So all the hemlock cones were missing. It was such a mystery to me. So I was hoping that possibly tonight that all of you, my friends, would help me be able to solve this mystery. And I also have someone who I think will be a great help in order for us to solve the mystery of these missing hemlock cones. But just give me a sec. I have to grab my friend. Just one sec, okay? I'll be right back. All right. Hang on. I'm just getting my friend here. We'll be with you in just a second. Okay, I think my friend is almost ready. Well, hello there. I'm Hemlock Holmes, nature detective, and I heard that all the Hemlock Holmes have gone missing from Campbell Valley Regional Park. Will you help me solve this mystery? Wonderful! Now let's start with the first clue. Hmm, clue number one. The cones went missing during the day. Hmm. Now, we're going to see several clues throughout. So remember these clues as they're going to help us solve the mystery. All right. Let's see, our first suspect. Ah, raccoon. Well, of course, I've solved the mystery. It must be the raccoon. 
Well, he wears a mask like a bandit. I'm sure it must be this fellow. You know, why else would he have a mask like that? Hmm? Let's ask. Mr. Raccoon? Well, yes? I think that you've taken all the hemlock cones from the forest at Campbell Valley Regional Park. Well, no, I didn't, I didn't do that. Are you sure you're wearing a mask like a bandit? It must be the reason. Well, no, the reason why raccoons have this black fur around their eyes is it helps to reduce glare so that we have better night vision because we're nocturnal. Nocturnal, you say? Yeah, nocturnal. What does this nocturnal mean? Well, nocturnal is when you're more active at night than the day. So I'm busy at nighttime while everyone else is sleeping. Hmm, interesting. Are you sure it's not you? It's not me, I told you. All right, but don't go too far though. I, I, I haven't decided yet if I think it's you or not. All right, but I promise it wasn't me. Well, friends, what do you think of that? Hmm, says he's nocturnal. Interesting. Well, let's see. Who's our next suspect? Ah, the black-tailed deer. It says here, fawns are born with light-spotted fur, which helps them camouflage. <gasps> camouflage? Well, if you need to camouflage, that means you need to hide. Why else would you be hiding but because you took the hemlock cones? Ah, it must be the deer. I'm sure of it. It, it wasn't me. Are you sure? Why else would you be camouflaging if it wasn't you who stole the cones? Well, well, I'm a little deer. I'm a fawn. And, and, and there might be predators trying to eat me, so I have to camouflage. Oh, camouflage predators? What do you mean? Who wants to eat you? Well, lots of animals, but for example, cougars. Oh, a cougar would want you to, yeah, a cougar, so I have to be able to camouflage to get away so they don't eat me. Hmm, interesting. Well, I, I didn't realize that. Hmm, well, it does say here, though, that you like to eat the leaves of hemlock trees and that they're an important food source for you. Well, yeah, I like the leaves, like the nice green, fresh part, but I, that doesn't mean I eat the cones. Hmm, all right. Well, I'll think about it, but don't go too far. All right, but it wasn't me. Interesting. This deer has denied it as well. Although I am suspicious, you know, the, the deer said that it does like to eat parts of the hemlock tree. All right, let's see. I think I have another clue. Ah, clue number two. All the scales of the cones were pulled off and left in a large pile. <laughs> what curious behavior. Now, what kind of creature would do something like that? Huh, I wonder. Oh, I have an idea. You know who I think it could be? The beaver. You know, I've seen the beaver often leave piles of wood chips behind, you know, in a big pile. So I wonder if the beaver is doing the same thing with the hemlock cones and leaving this pile behind. Hmm, let's see. The beaver is our next suspect. Let's see if the beaver took the hemlock cones. Uh, like me? No, I didn't take your hemlock cones. Are you kidding me? I don't need any of your hemlock cones. I'm too busy anyways. Busy, you say? Why, like, yeah, totally. Have you ever heard the saying, like, busy as a beaver? Well, yes, I've heard that, busy as a beaver, but what are you busy doing? Well, like, I'm so busy. I have to, like, cut trees down all day. I'm, like, cutting, cutting, cutting trees down. Well, why are you cutting so many trees down? Well, like I gotta like cut trees down so I can make a dam and then I gotta cut trees down to make a lodge. And then of course, oh, I just love bark. Like it's my favorite, like my favorite dish to eat. Like, so I just love fresh juicy strips of bark. It's like, it tastes so good, but I'm not eating your cones. Like, ew, yeah, gross. 
are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I like the bark. And I'm just too busy to be dealing with you and your hemlock cones. Well, uh, all right, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's like not me, okay? Well, all right. The, the beaver says it's not her as well. I, do, I don't understand. I, I mean, who could it be? I, oh. oh, my good. Oh. Oh my God, oh my goodness. Do you, do you, do you smell that? Um, uh, I, can you smell, smell that? Smell, oh, oh, something, something is not, not quite right. Oh, oh, oh my, oh my goodness. I, I think it's our next suspect. Oh, um, hello, skunk. Oh, hello. Um, that's a, a, quite an aroma you have there, um, Skong. Ah, uh, yes, it's just my natural perfume. Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, it very, very um, interesting smell. And, um, uh, well, I, I certainly didn't smell that anywhere in the forest and, and, and near the, where the cones were missing. So I, I can't imagine that it would be you. Oh, of course it wasn't me. And I, I don't have time to take your, to your hemlock cones, you know. Oh. Geez, well, I definitely think that I would have noticed a, a, a smell like this. Just, just curious though. Um, why do you have such an aroma? Well, there's all sorts of predators who often go after skunks, and so this is a way to protect myself. I just spray them with my smell, and I don't know why, but they don't seem to like it, so they just stay away. Oh, uh, very interesting. Um. All right then, um, curious, um, how far can a, a skunk spray that, that, that scent? Um, well, I don't know, you tell me. Hmm, friends, do you know? How far do you think a skunk can accurately spray? Jeff, can you pull up the pole? Perfect, all right, let's see. Do you think it's as far as three feet or three toasters side by side, uh, six feet? like a physically distanced bubble? Hmm, how about 10 feet? Two bathtubs side by side. Or a football feed, 360 feet. Well, that seems far. I don't know, what do you think? Hmm, I wonder if they're gonna get it. I don't know, they're very smart. All right, well, we'll see. Hmm, what do you think? Curious. Wow. It says they think it's 10 feet, the majority of them. Are they correct? Oh, yes, they got it, absolutely. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, can you promise not to spray me? I promise that I will make no further accusations. You better not, or you'll get it. All right, uh, I'll see you later, see you later, skunk. All right, well, I, I don't think it could be skunk and I don't want to accuse the skunk of, of, of doing that. Uh, all right, I think we're getting closer and closer to solving the mystery. We have one suspect left. Hmm. All right, ah, the Douglas Squirrel. Hmm, Douglas Squirrel, ah, uh, yeah? Hello, little squirrel. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, it says here that you're diurnal, uh, which means that you're active during the day. Oh yeah, I'm, I am busy all the time, up and down the trees during the day, up and down, all around. Ooh, up and down, up and down. Hmm, seeing as you're out in the forest during the day, curious, have you seen anyone taking hemlock cones? Oh, hemlock cones? Uh, no, never seen it, no, 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 no. Are you sure? Because if you're busy during the day in the forest, I'd, I'd imagine that you would see something. Oh, no, just too busy, too busy, you know. Uh, I, 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 I don't have pay attention, time to pay attention for that. All right, well, I'm trying to investigate where all these cones have gone. Yeah, well, it wasn't me, but uh, I'll see you later, Kate. Bye, bye. Hmm, curious. That little squirrel seemed quick to get out of here. Hmm, I don't know. Do you think we're ready to solve it? Ah, I think I have one more clue. Ah, clue number three. This strange noise was heard when the cones went missing. Let's listen. Oh 
my goodness, quite the sound. I don't know if I've heard the sound like that before. Oh my goodness, that is strange, remarkable. Ah, there it is again. Hmm, well, I'm wondering if we have enough clues to solve the mystery. Let's see, let's review. Clue number one, the cones went missing during the day. Ah, that's important. We learned that some animals were diurnal, meaning active during the day, and some were nocturnal. Hmm, that could be helpful. Ah, clue number two. All the scales of the cones were pulled off and left in a large pile. I can only imagine a, an animal or a creature with, with paws and things that could pull apart. I'm not sure if all the suspects we interviewed had the ability to pull apart uh, hemlock cones. Hmm. And our third clue, there was that strange alarm call when the cones went missing. Aha, uh -huh. that is interesting. Well, my friends, what do you think? I have a good idea of who it might be. Do you? Now's the time. I want you to tell me who do you think took the hemlock cones? I think we can solve it. All right, now who's responsible? Do you think it was the raccoon? Do you think it was the black-tailed deer? Or was it the beaver? the striped skunk, or the Douglas squirrel? Hmm, I'm sure you must know. You're very good nature detectives, I expect. All right, I can't wait to see what your answer is. We have some, we have some good detectives here. Oh, good. Wow, so it looks like the vast majority of you thought it was the little Douglas squirrel. I wonder, what do you think? Should we find out? By Jove, you're right, my friends. Oh, it was that sneaky little squirrel stealing all the hemlock cones. Silly little squirrel. But of course, that makes sense because inside each of the little hemlock cones is seeds. And of course, the Douglas squirrels are always looking to gather all those seeds and they have to rip all the cones apart in order to get that seed to eat. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you so much, my friends, for helping me solve the mystery of the missing hemlock cones. I'm so happy and I'm sure that Zoe will be happy as well. Aha! Did you know it was me? Ah, the second mystery. It was me all along. Thank you so much, my friends, for helping me solve the mystery of the missing hemlock cones. So now you'll know next time when you're out and about in a forest and you see squirrels running all about that it's the little uh, those little squirrels are looking for seeds and uh, for storing. So I wanted to thank everyone for being here for our very last Bedtime Nature Stories. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you enjoyed the series. And I hope that next time I will get to see you outside in a regional park. So thank you so much, everybody, and have a great rest of your evening. And indeed, thank you, Zoe, and thank you to Jeff, Rochelle, and all the interpreters and all the parents. It's been a pleasure, and this is our last, so good night, and have a great, great time out there. Thank you, everyone. Bye for now. <laughs>